Cecil and Ruth Herschler. Am I saying that right? Herschler. Herschler, sorry. Founded Education Without Borders. Um, I wanted to, you to tell us about this nonprofit organization uh, based that you do work in South Africa. And again, I'll ask you to focus on how are education projects creating choices in the lives of the students you affect and probably the teachers too. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, SFU, for letting us come here. Cecil Herschler, Ruth Herschler, co-founders of Education Without Borders. You can read about us on the website. You can hear about our history. In two lines, we started working when we were privileged white students at the University of Cape Town in 1971, got incensed with the injustice that was happening to the black people living in townships around big cities, and started working then with the high school. When we emigrated to Canada, we didn't forget the work we did with that school and our commitment to it, and we recommitted ourselves from Canada to continuing to work with that high school. Our particular foundation is embedded in the high school. We've gone through re rebuilding the school, introducing art programs, um, uh, working and visioning with the teachers and the students, and finally, we are now looking at academics. We're looking at math and English literature, uh, literacy and job retraining. One story, we, we tested the kids in, in grade eight in basic addition and subtraction from a standardized test year in Canada. No kid got more than 27 out of 100 right in basic plus and minus in grade eight zero out of 100 for multiplication and division. We brought a professor from Canada, an, uh, a lady from India, who'd worked with First Nations and Aboriginal children in Alberta and BC, and had developed five workbooks. If you start with those workbooks, you break into small groups, you work with trained tutors and teachers, you get to a grade 10 high level math. This is what she did with the First Nations kids in Canada. Those five workbooks are now ingrained in some of the schools here in BC and Alberta. We brought her to the township in South Africa. We implemented the five workbooks. And this year, for the first time, four of the alumni from one of our grade eights got into a different school called the Charter School in South Africa where they bust into the school, they stay the whole day, they get fed. These four kids now have a chance to get to university and college, but we're not forgetting the 80% of the school that although we're going to help them with basic maths, we, we've, we're now starting to work with the community in how to look at job retraining so that when they finish school, they have a trade or some of them are gonna be lucky enough to get into university and college. And Ruth's gonna talk about one other ripple effect of implementing maths and literacy and job retraining programs. Yeah, so our, our passion um, is driven by many things, but I think one of the things that constantly keeps us passionate is all these ripple effects of the work that EWB's been doing in Cape Town. And one of them is actually the story of Solly up there, who is um, our head tutor, who came to our school after, to tutor in the Maths Yes We Can program after he dropped out of engineering school um, in Cape Town because he lost his bursary, because the bursary wasn't administered effectively, and then he had to go out trying to find food to feed himself, and as a result, he starts skipping classes, didn't maintain his grades, and then lost his bursary totally. And so he came and tutored for us, and after tutoring for um, a while, he was able to buy himself a shack in an informal community in Cape Town, which gave him permanent place to live. And, um, and since then, he's been saving his money to try and go back to um, university. And this, just last week, under the um, um, wings of our international volunteer who's been mentoring him, he's been saving 50% of the money that he was earning, and now he's able to go back in August to his studies. So that was a ripple effect of what we're doing. So. Education, giving students 
choices. You feel that once they have these basic skills, they have new choices in their lives. It's not so easy in South Africa. There's 60% unemployment for kids, be right. young adults, between the ages of 19 and 35. It's not, a, it's not simple solutions here. All we want to do is give, is give the kids at the end of grade nine the choice of what career to, go, to aspire to. If they're being put dumped into maths literacy, they're never going to go to college or university anyhow. But if we can give them the choice at the end of grade nine, a percentage of them will stay with high maths and will, will get good English skills and maybe some of them will go to college and university. But we are not going to forget the 80% that won't. And what we're working with is researching ideas on how to implement in the school system trade, trade, skill training, so that there can be ways that those kids, when they finish school, can start their own businesses or be supported and enabled to create their own businesses and create jobs that are so needed in South Africa. We're working under the radar of the government. We work with NGOs. We network because that's where the passion and that's where the, that's where the real energy is. So far, although the government is very friendly and let us work, they are not implementing the correct programs, as far as I'm concerned, for people in poverty in South Africa. We'll ask you more questions about that later. Thank you so much for sharing and for the work you're doing in South Africa.